Hey guys, this is Matt for Creative, and today we are looking at the iPhone 15 Pro Max. I've had this for a few days. I live in New York City. I've been using this just tons and tons and tons at work. I've put everything on this. My email, my pictures, my video. I've started using this to shoot video, to shoot photos. The battery life has been okay. I would say because I have the iPhone 14 Pro Max that I feel like because it's starting up, because it's downloading so many things, that first day, it kind of killed the battery. It got hot really quick. It really needed to be on Wi-Fi just to make sure that I could download everything without killing my cell service and killing the battery even further. But afterwards, it really did a great job at just kind of being the larger size iPhone. Now, if you've seen other people's videos, the iPhone 15 Plus seems to have the best, best value, best, best, battery, but this one comes at a close second, a little bit over the iPhone 14 Pro Max. And for me, it's been exactly what I'm looking for. Now, in all, I always use two phones. And the one that I direct directly upgraded this one from was an iPhone 13 mini. So it's a big difference because I usually have one mini and one large phone. And in this case, now I have two large phones. But what I really like is the weight reduction. In numbers, it's a very minimal weight reduction, but in terms of usage, it feels significantly different. And I continue to feel that because I'm always using the iPhone 14 Pro Max and the iPhone 15 Pro Max just simultaneously, just because I do have, and I do use two phones at, at once, just because I usually kill the battery. Now this, the battery I've gone down to maybe about 30% on both, using these just for answering emails, taking photos, taking videos, creating video productions, editing, researching, doing everything. It just tends to kill the battery. I'm one of those extreme power users who just kind of kills their data and kills their battery. But for me, this has been a great little option. Now, watching other videos, and this has to be like a meta commentary on everybody else's review, what worries me is that this is not as durable as the iPhone 14 Pro Max, or 14 Pro. If you watched everything Apple Pro's drop tests, which I watch, and that's his one video that he releases every year to support his company, it was, I believe, on the first drop on the back where that phone really just cracked immediately, and that's this phone. Um, I believe it's the 15 Pro Max, which is the weakest, 15 Pro is a little bit weaker, and then what's even more durable is the previous generations, which would be the iPhone 14 Pro Max, followed by the 14 Pro. Of course, when they are bigger phones, there's a bigger surface area for something to go wrong. If it's a little bit more compact, it's less weight to kind of ram into the ground, if that makes any sense. But I was honestly thinking, <coughs> I was honestly thinking about rocking this phone with no case, but if for many different reasons, I am now thinking I'm not doing that. First, because it is, I mean, according to people's tests on YouTube, and I, I, I do trust them there, um, it is not as structurally sound. And also one thing actually, like they did reduce the weight and I really appreciate that. But please, somebody check me on this. The stainless steel, I believe the entire structure is stainless steel. With this, it is like the very thinnest of titanium on the outside and an aluminum structure. And I know that reduces the weight, but I think the, the reduction in weight is pretty much, they've reverted this back to kind of an aluminum frame with some titanium on the outside. Um, I did watch Jerry Riggs Everything. Everything's kind of tear down and cut through and you can see how the aluminum was really tightly bonded to the titanium, and it just didn't look like there was a lot of titanium on there. I would have to say that this is a cost-cutting measure, and they did other things to kind of like, they said, oh, it is, it has titanium. It is not titanium. I would say that there is more aluminum in this phone than titanium. And if the titanium, because I did get the all uh, black or the space black version, if this phone, happens to be something that will nick, if you scratch it, you will see through to the natural titanium and look old. If it's already that, then really what is the point? 
Like it's a very thin piece of titanium because this is grade five to ti titanium, the most expensive, I believe, out there, at least one of the most expensive. There's a lot that, you know, like, it, it really feels like they tried to tell you one thing and they did another uh, in a majority overall. I really feel, and I'm not gonna open this up, I really would refer you to look at iFixit, Jerry Rig Everything, and other people who actually open this up to look at the frame, that this is primarily aluminum as the structural material, and then the outer little portion here is titanium over aluminum. Regardless of that, I think this phone does feel great. It's the next kind of like, like little iteration in the Pro Max lineup where it is lightweight. I like the lighter weight. I now am thinking about even just having this be my primary phone, not having a secondary phone because it used to be when I had the mini as my primary, I had to worry about the battery. This has one of the best batteries out there. So I think it's gonna handle really well and it's really worked these last few days. I haven't killed the battery as I have with the Mini and even killed this battery as its backup. Having two large phones for me in my case, and I know other people do this as well, it really works, but I think if this is your primary device and only device, I think you're gonna be perfectly fine with it. For me, the five time zoom, it really does help. I was taking videos and picture. You may have seen the previous video that I put out here. I think it's the previous one where I kind of walk at night and I go through the one times, the 0.5 and the five time zoom. It's not, you know, extremely stable because I'm just naturally walking. I'm not really like keeping it steady for the intention of keeping it steady, but I really like that five times because what I found is I believe on the three times on the older phone, there wasn't that much bokeh, but zooming in even more with a true five times uh, camera zoom, it really does give you that bokeh because you get your subject and no matter how close or far they are, the background's always gonna be blurred if it is kind of like a farther away background. And I really do like that. It just adds and kind of makes that zoom even, it makes it a little bit more usable. Um, because for me, I was taking the three times zoom to sporting events and concerts and kind of zooming in with that. But my primary camera, and you may have seen this from other videos, is the HX99 from Sony. This has like a little flip out screen, but what I really use this for is a 720 millimeter zoom. This of course is not gonna match that, but there are some cases when you go into a concert or something, they're not gonna let you bring any camera whatsoever. For me, like there are places that I can't bring in this camera, even though it is relatively small, but it's bigger than other cameras. And most places have been fine. I actually have not run into a place that has not been okay with this camera, but it's a little bit of an issue because this has to be transferred to a, compu to a computer before it goes to a phone. But hey, with this, you can go a five times video zoom, can you see there? That's regular. And then we go all the way here. That's five times. And that goes up to 15 times. By the way, it's up to 15 times in video zoom and 25 times in photo. Photos have been great. Crispy video has been great. Crispy. I really do like, and it's something that I'm going to use more of, is that Apple Pro Raw or ProRes, the video code, that works with log now. So all that kind of fake HDR stuff that if you really want to go away from that, this is definitely going to help you out. And I really need to learn how to grade more because I was, I've been fully reliant on systems that kind of don't have log, which is the um, old Canon EFM line, which I shoot professionally with. And even the older, um, iPhone 14 Pro Max had ProRes, but did not have log. So at least you have that option on this. But one of the coolest things, and where is it? Because I think that this is really, really cool. This is 
a little USB-C to SD card adapter. And what's really interesting about this is that when you pull up the camera, let's pull this up here together and go to video and we're going to go to ProRes. And look, it says I have 47 minutes and that's all the storage that this has on here. I have a 256 gigabyte card and I'm going to insert it here at the bottom. Now immediately you can see at the bottom it says USB-C and it's changed to 36 minutes and you're like, okay, it went down. But no, that's because it's going to be instantly saving towards this card. You may have seen other people with um, little, what do you call it, like um, solid state drives that you can kind of connect to and it's kind of out of the way, but look how small this is. And I can just hot, I mean, I can't hot swap, but I can swap these out for different SD cards, load, 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 and be perfectly fine. This is really, truly amazing. And one thing I didn't even see, can you offload if you're not in ProRes? No, it doesn't automatically do that. It only automatically does it if it is in ProRes. So 47 down to 36 and USB-C is confirmed to be there. Now, I don't know how sturdy this is going to be because one of my next things is all in all, <clears throat> USB-C and especially USB-C uh, 3.0 on the pros, 2.0 on the regulars is going to be better for transfer speeds. But really, I want you to look at the structure of Lightning, which is outgoing, and USB-C, which is here. This is one solid unit. Like, there is nothing within this to bend. It is a more solid piece of metal than this because you have more conductors on the inside. <clears throat> but that also means, if it wants, you can flex this. You can push this together and flex it. If you look at the iPhone 14 Pro Max, that's just a hole. That's literally just a hole. The conductors are on the outside. It's just a hole. When we have the USB-C, there is a piece on the inside. And I used to be pretty rough with my technology. I am not so rough anymore. Um, not that I respect it more or less. I'm just like naturally getting better at using the random pieces of technology that I own. Micro USB was really bad. If you jammed it in the wrong way, it would just, it wouldn't work. This, let's say you have this in your bag, this gets crushed and this kind of goes in the wrong way where I never really like, I really abuse these because I just put them in my pocket whenever I'm shooting because this never warps. It's a solid piece of metal. This never really warps. So you're going to get a solid connection here. It really sounds, do you hear that? It sounds solid. Now I want you to hear this. It sounds more hollow and more empty. Oh, and another thing, um, some haptic feedback on this, it just kind of resonates solid on the 14 Pro Max. You can see this is a purple one for reference. Um, and it, and some haptics really feel kind of just like hollow. Of course, it's because it's a less, I think it's, is it a less dense material? Uh, titanium than um, stainless steel, but also aluminum. It just kind of reverberates in like kind of like an older device that I never would have thought would be kind of relative to the premiumness of this. Oh, and I do have to say, I really want to make sure we get this on camera right. This, it gets fingerprints and grease on it immediately. It no longer looks brand new. It kind of looks, it's matte and it has a brush finish. So it's definitely going to be a different finish than this, but for whatever reason, and maybe it's just me complaining about just whatever, but I don't know. I, I feel like the finish, even if it does have like whatever on this, oh, this is my 13. It just feels different. It's shine that you can actually clean off 
and it becomes a much better looking shine, kind of reverts. Look at that beautiful shine. But then when you're like, oh, I have grease on this, I've tried to clean this off and I really don't get much of a change. It still kind of looks greasy. It just doesn't give me that premium look and feel. It really, honestly, feels like aluminum. I know aluminum is on the inside. I know that titanium is on the outside, but it does feel like aluminum. It just, it feels a little bit different. Another thing, because we're covering this always, you can see the flat glass on this. And also, this is not really like, they say it was sharp, it's not really that sharp. But look, you can see that flat glass on the front. And because of that, you get like, for whatever reason, this is a smoother transition on the front than the transition from glass to titanium on this. And this feels like the older phones that had curved edges. And just like this, this is an iPhone 6S. This one actually feels a little bit better too, like it, the glass curves into the curve of this. Because when I go over this, I can feel that difference between, okay, there's glass, there's titanium. There just feels to be something not quite curving properly, where you can definitely tell that there's a difference between this front and the side panel. A little bit in the back too, but I feel like that's a little bit better. The front, I can definitely tell that it is, there's a separation here. And again, it's something I remember from when they had curved phone iPhones. I prefer the completely flat front rather than this little thing because it gives you that little shine at the corner but I guess they did need to have a shine to make it seem premium because of the brushed titanium doesn't give you that stainless steel shine anymore. There are a lot of good, good, sorry, there are a lot of good and bad things about this phone. A lot of the bad things I would say are cosmetic. It's functionally better. Like they have gone through like this that I can record prologue onto this and record for however long this holds out is just great. I, I really appreciate that. And it's gonna be really easy to offload things when I shoot from here and offload to the micro S, sorry, the SD card adapter on there. It's gonna be done quicker as well. I just like this a lot. Looking at this by itself, it's a beautiful phone. It is not that heavy as a large screen device and it's extremely functional, has a long battery life. Depending on what kind of phone that you're upgrading from, this one will make you happy. I think that I chose the right one. By the way, um, for the last few years, I've been going with uh, 512 gigabytes. That's what I recommend for everybody. Content creator or not, I am a, an extreme power user and I'm fine with 512 gigabytes. I do have two terabytes of iCloud storage, just to let you know. Anyway, guys, if you have any comments or questions, put it in the comment section below. Don't forget, I'm on Instagram and threads at m8b9. You can email me at creativenyc2023 at gmail.com. Oh yeah, the um, action button. I mean, it works and I've mapped it to be the camera. But that's really it. It's uh, cool. Maybe I'll find something else to do with it. For me, it's, um, it is potential. And I see that as being kind of cool down the line. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you next time.